Good afternoon and welcome to another scope, a midday scope. Um, today we're continuing on talking about marriage and I am sharing um, truth number three of the four surprising truths I learned about my husband that have changed my marriage. So welcome. I'm so glad to have you all here today. It's so hard for me to not start my scopes with good morning because I've gotten so used to doing my scopes and saying good morning. And so I'm like, hmm, let's see, I guess I say good afternoon. I'm gonna have to work on that. Hey Chris, it's fun to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. Um, okay, so uh, for those of you who missed my other, my first um, two scopes um, this week, you might wanna go back to catch um, and watch them. If you go to catch.me forward slash money saving mom, um, you can watch those. And um, I talked about um, the first two truths that I learned about my marriage that changed my marriage or learned about my husband. And the first truth was that I can't fix him. And yesterday I talked about how he needs to be my top priority and he needs to know that he is my top priority. Um, the book that I talked about yesterday that I just showed, um, this is by Shanti Feldham. This is called The Surprising Secrets of Highly Happy Marriages. And I really recommend this book. There's so much that I learned and gleaned from this book. Um, yay, this is the first time you've been able to be on live, Lee and Lindy, um, welcome. Okay, so today, truth number three is when he says that he's thinking about nothing, he really is. When he says that he's thinking about nothing, he really is. Here's the book, you can see that. Okay, so my husband and I have been married for 13 years, and you guys, I really did not believe that this was true, like that this was a thing, that guys actually could think about nothing. And I'd read about it in a book, someone talked about the nothing box. If you've read um, the book, um, Men Are Like Waffles, Women Are Like Spaghetti, which the whole premise of that book is that um, women, you know, our thoughts are all like spaghetti, just jumbled all together, and that we can think about um, one thing that's connected to another thing, that's connected to another thing, that's connected to another thing. And men think, by and large, in boxes, like the little waffle boxes. You know, if you think of the little um, boxes and waffles and they, they move from one box to another box to another box and they will get, you know, they can think about one thing and that's all that they think about. Oh, did you wanna come say good morning or good afternoon? I guess it's good afternoon. Okay, got all, all dressed up. Okay, you say good afternoon, then you have to go, okay? <laughs> Good afternoon. Don't talk like a baby. <laughs> Don't talk like a baby. Okay. All right. Now you need to go. Okay? All right. Okay. You and your husband are the opposite of that. That's that's so interesting. Okay. I need you to go now. What do you say? Yes, ma'am? Okay. Okay. So, um... Whenever um, we first got married, then I... No, uh-uh. <laughs> Obey mommy. Go out. Did you just see the yellow hair tie in my hair? Because we are down to like no hair ties. Um, I had to order some yesterday. So it's like, we are down to ah, yellow in my hair. Um, so anyway. Um, okay, so I would I would get frustrated because we would um, be sitting, sitting somewhere and he would just act like he was in such deep thought. And I would think, um, you know, what is he thinking? Like there's some you know, he's mulling over some really deep theological thought, or maybe he's thinking something really romantic, or or maybe he's, um, you know, just like has something that he's going to share that is just going to be this like beautiful, poetic something or other. Or we're going to have this great conversation. And so I'd say, what are you thinking about? And he'd be like, nothing. Uh, and I'd be like, no, 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 no. Like, what are you thinking about? Like, you have to be thinking about something. So what are you thinking about? Nothing. And I'd be so frustrated because I'd be like, you can't think about nothing. Like you don't think about nothing. You can't think about nothing. How do you think about nothing? And I'd be frustrated because I feel like there's something that he's not sharing with me and that I need to dig deeper and I need to try to figure out what is going on in his brain. And, and so one day we were having this conversation and um, he said, he said he was thinking about nothing and I said you can't think about nothing like that is not possible and he said well what are you thinking about 
And so I proceeded to, I said, well, do you really want to know? And I proceeded to tell him every single thing that was in my brain that I was thinking about. And he just, his jaw was just dropping. He said, how on earth do you think about all of those things at once? And I was like, how do you not? I mean, that's just how my brain is always thinking. If you asked me that at any time, I would be thinking about 25 different things at once. And I realized that he truly and literally has this, this box or this part of his brain that he can go to where he thinks about nothing. And so when he tells me that he's thinking about nothing, he really actually is. There's nothing that I need to try to dig up or get out of him. He's not hiding something. He's just thinking about nothing. And this truth, such a simple truth, but really helped me to be able to appreciate my husband and appreciate the fact that there is this beautiful thing when he can like sit and focus and concentrate about one thing at a time where I'm all jumping from this to this to this to this to this to this to this, to this and it all intertwines and it's all connected. There's this beautiful difference that he can think about nothing, that he can think about just one thing, or he can think about nothing. I wish sometimes that I had a nothing box, that I could just go there, that I could shut off my brain and just sit in the nothing box for a while, and I can't. And so I have just had to embrace this about my husband, and I've learned to embrace it, and it's been a wonderful truth that has made a big change in our marriage and in our conversations. And, and sometimes you know, I'm the person that I love to go deep. I love to have really intense conversations. And we can have those sometimes, but we can also be okay with just being together and him just being in his nothing box and that's okay. And um, there was some, I don't know who it is that talks about the whole um, face-to-face time and shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder time, but how as women, a lot of times we want from our spouse, we want from our husbands, we want this, um, face-to-face -face time. We're really connecting. We're having this deep communication. But men, by and large, they have also this need for shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder time where you're just sitting together, shoulder-to-shoulder, -shoulder, and you're doing something together, or you're just being together, or you're just watching a show together, or you're just sitting on your back porch swing, or whatever. You're just together, and you're not having this deep, intense conversation. So as women, how it feeds us to have those deep conversations and that face-to-face -face time, for men, it feeds them to have that shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder time. And so really tried to figure out how can I have more of that and not always feel like I need to be having these deep, intense conversations and that if we're not connecting um, at that level and communicating at that level that something's wrong, that it's okay to just enjoy being together without having deep conversation. And so I want to just challenge you today to embrace the differences in your spouse, to embrace who they are, don't just accept it, but embrace it and see it as a beautiful thing that can add so much to your life. And like we talked about earlier this week, don't try to make your man into someone that he's not. Love him for exactly who he is. Embrace him for where he is and who God has made him to be. And you will find so much more joy and happiness in your marriage and in your relationship and so much less tension and frustration. So that's what I'm going to share with you today. And tomorrow we will talk about truth number four. And um, I'm really excited about sharing that because it's been, it's been a really, um, made a, such a big difference for us in our marriage. Um, so anyway, I hope you have a wonderful day and I will be back tonight around 8 p.m. Central Time to share um, the top deals scope. Have a great day.